on Kusik, Eric, John, and Chad begin their trek into the foreign terrain. And they are quickly greeted by millions of the island's residents. The constantly swarming black flies that are attracted to the warmth of human cavities. They're just in your eyes, they're in your nose, they're in your ears. I thought it's there like wasn't as many bugs gone. up here. It feels like somebody's throwing sand in your face. There's so many bugs hitting you, and they're landing in your eyes, they're going up your nose. The bugs like to bite. They get in your mouth, they get in your ears. One flew up my nose and ended up in my nasal cavity, and I could feel it moving around inside there. Oh my god. I can't tell you how many levels of wrong that feels. With no time to waste, the team quickly sets up camp and gets ready for a three-mile hike. Gold is this way, still. You can see it through the bugs. Yeah. I can Let's go. Through the bugs. <laughs> Eric hopes that his maps are correct so they can get to the prospecting site, do their work, and get back to base camp before sundown. If we can get up onto a ledge there and continue around to the left, we do that. If not, we go to the right. OK. You need us a zip line. Yeah. One thing Eric's maps don't reveal is Kusik's steep, mountainous terrain. Hiking with Eric is always interesting, because he'll look at a map and say, oh, it's not that bad. And then you get out there, and you look up, and it's much worse. Rather than going up that steep section there, we're going to try to zigzag up this way. It's just vertical. Greenland has taught me that what you see on the map and what's actually on the ground are two completely different things. We definitely don't want to be moving down this in the dark, Eric. No. The miners are alone, miles from contact with the rest of their team. And they know that nightfall will bring below freezing temperatures and total darkness. Careful moving above me. I know. I'm going to try and get out of your way. Pull this yellow if you slip. Oh, believe me, I will do that. Getting lost or failing to return to base camp in time could be a fatal mistake. Hey, John, we got to get directly to the other side of that knoll. It's not a knoll, it's a mountain. cliff. Yeah, it is a mountain. I don't know why I call it a knoll. Wow. Yeah, this should get us the view we Let's want. Let's see what we've got here. I finally get to the top of the rise, and I look out, and I see a huge chasm in front of me, and I'm not seeing what I'm looking for. Eric is looking for a contact zone that he believed would be in the valley under this ridge. He's identified a spot on Kusik where two rock faces meet. That could have been the birthplace of rubies or even diamonds. I'm not seeing it. I see it. That is it. Eric has found the contact zone. But at this time of day, the team would not be able to prospect there and make it back to base camp before nightfall. By the time we get over there, we'd have a chance to grab a couple samples at most, and then we'd just have to come back out. Well, it took us about four hours to get here, four and a half hours. It's not going to happen today. We're going to have to make a decision if we can even get it tomorrow. I realize we, we're not going to make it. I'm not going to be able to get over to that spot. Even tomorrow is pushing it. If we could get to the wash down there where it's coming out, maybe we could do a little panning. And I'm down. sick of panning. I'm just sick I of it. I am too. Can't even get to a zone that I mapped two months ago. What are we going to do? With just a few days left in Greenland, the miners can't afford for the expensive trip to Kusik to fail. Now they need to decide whether they should head back to base camp or once again risk their lives in search of riches. I don't know what the we're going to do. I don't know. While Eric's team searches for rubies in Kusik, wow. Jack and Jesse are on an equally important mission on a different island. The team's food budget is nearly gone, so it's up to them to feed the crew. We cannot walk up and down these mountains day after day without a lot of calories. You know, we don't want to come home and tell everybody, no, we didn't see an animal. We're going to have to find something to eat. The biggest difference between Greenland and Maine, in Maine, I have trees. Here, a caribou can see you at four or five miles away.
Jack, there's a reindeer up on that ridge. I think she's just a young one. She might be with a little herd, but probably got cut off. We recognized that it was probably an orphan and wouldn't make it through the winter. So we took the shot. It was a successful hunt. It's going to provide us a couple good meals. I'm satisfied with what we got. It's the team's second day on Kusik, and Eric knows that he can't return to Storo empty-handed. So Eric decides to make a risky move and leads the team on an unmapped route to the contact zone he believes holds rubies. We're gonna go about, it's gonna be about a mile and a half that way. Okay. We got a long ways. Let's go, wasting time. Day two, we hiked around the end of the peninsula. And look at that. When we got around the corner, there it was, an extension of the mineralized zone just staring us in the face. That's some good looking rock. It sure is. That's the type of stuff we're looking for. The team finds a deposit of Gossen, extremely decomposed red stained rock, which is the number one indicator of gold. This is the perfect place for gold to be sitting although the team already decided to search for rubies instead of gold. They decide to explore the Gossen. Where I'm from, a little bit of gold could mean that somewhere else there's a lot more gold. This might be the beginning of the trail. I'm gonna run up on top and see if I can trace it up there. Oh, wow, and look at that. The Gossen streak is the first they've seen in Greenland and it is so unusually large that John believes they could be close to a huge bonanza of gold. Gold wears an iron hat. That saying is as old as gold mining. And this could be the iron hat. It has all the looks of every picture I've ever seen in every prospecting book that I've read. It cuts at an angle like this, and you can follow it just like this. All this stuff, that's incredible looking stuff. That is the best stuff I have seen on this whole trip. To just be here and to recognize what it might be is uh, it's humbling. 